Well, the president of Belarus is being condemned after ordering a fighter jet to force down a commercial flight over the weekend. The plane, heading from Greece to Lithuania yesterday, was carrying about 170 passengers, including some Americans. It was ordered to land in Minsk, the capital of Belarus, after the crew was notified about a bomb threat that turned out to be false. European leaders are calling it a hijacking and an act of state terrorism. One of the passengers was a prominent critic of Belarus authoritarian leader Alexander Lukashenko. When the aircraft landed, the 26-year-old activist was arrested. Charlie Dagata reports from London. Here's the Ryanair passenger plane on the tarmac in the Belarus capital of Minsk. Luggage pulled off the plane and inspected by sniffer dogs for what authorities called a bomb threat. But the real target of the search appeared to be opposition activist Roman Pratasevich, who was detained upon landing. Before his arrest, a fellow passenger said Pratasevich knew he was in danger. He's super scared. I saw, I looked at him directly into his eyes and it was very sad. The Ryanair flight took off from Athens, bound for Lithuania, but just two minutes before it entered Lithuanian airspace, it was diverted. The pilots were told to land the aircraft in Minsk because of a potential security threat. According to the flight tracking, it appears the plane was actually closer to its final destination in Vilnius when it changed course. Belarus state media reported that President Alexander Lukashenko himself ordered a MiG-29 fighter jet to escort the aircraft down. The Lithuanian prime minister called for an uncompromising international response. It is an unprecedented attack against an international community, as civilian plane and its passengers have been hijacked by military force. Pratasevich has been in exile after helping to organize demonstrations against Lukashenko, who has ruled Belarus with an iron fist for 27 years and is widely believed to have rigged the last election, which triggered widespread protests last summer. In the brutal crackdown that followed, tens of thousands were arrested and many demonstrators were badly beaten. Lukashenko has a powerful patron in Russian President Vladimir Putin. The CEO of Ryanair said he believed Russian agents were on board that flight because only one person was arrested when it landed, but a number of passengers got off while everyone else continued. So CBS News foreign correspondent Charlie Daggett is joining us now to talk a little bit more about this. Okay, Charlie, first off, what can you tell us about this activist? Why would the president of Belarus resort to such extreme measures to detain him? Yes, I mean, such an audacious act. Um, he's a 26-year-old activist. He's known as a blogger, but he's thought to be a personal enemy of Lukashenko and clearly is enough of a thorn in his side to want to do something about it by using these extreme measures in order to detain and harass him. What he has done in the past, he's not even an opposition member, uh, excuse me, uh, leader as such, but he has been part of the campaign against Lukashenko. And what he's been doing is drumming up uh, popular support in these anti-government demonstrations uh, that had gone into riot, rioting and, as you saw in that report, this brutal crackdown where literally, I mean, there were something like 34,000 people were detained. So he seemed to be one of these uh, young men and activists who continues to stir using things like social media in order to uh, organize these protests and demonstrations and why he's still considered to be a threat. I think it's also Lukashenko sending a message that he'll go through any measures that he needs to, what anybody would consider extreme measures, in order to bring somebody like this um, into detention. Uh, he has sought and has gained um, asylum in Poland. Uh, he was just traveling from one European capital to another when this happened. And, yep, yeah, I mean, it's, we've been using the word unprecedented, but in this case, it fits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I imagine the government in Belarus have um, either created a, a, an excuse to detain him or, or have a reason to detain him. But what's I don't know if he's facing charges and what sort of punishment could he possibly be facing now that he's in custody? Well, yeah. Yes, he, he can face charges of, of so-called enemy uh, against the state, which he and causing uh, civil unrest. And for that, he would be facing charges of uh, as many as 15 years um, in prison. But his friends and his supporters have said that's just the beginning. Uh, he is going to be tortured in these jails, um, and uh, his life may be under threat. So the the um, the authorities in Belarus haven't 
said yet what he's been charged with or why, why he's been detained. Um, I guess that would that would be in keeping in how he was detained. You have to explain that he was detained mm -hmm. and why and the charges that are against him. But in, in terms of the charges that are outstanding and the reason he would have been detained is 15 years. But again, his friends are saying he's going to be tortured in those prisons. He's going to disappear like other dissidents that we've seen in Belarus and other areas. Wow. I mean, you got to wonder because now, you know, here's a guy that I had never heard of before. And now his name is internationally known. I wonder just how much they'll be able to get away with. Um, but perhaps they don't care about the international repercussions, which brings me to this question. Um, we got a statement from Ryanair um, in light of what happened over the weekend, and that's when Ryanair you know, said that they had been told that there was some sort of security um, problem. That's what the impression that they were under. Ryanair condemned, this is part of the statement, Ryanair condemns the unlawful actions of Belarusian authorities and uh, called it an act of aviation piracy. The airline's now cooperating with an investigation led by the EU safety and security agencies as well as NATO. What are, what are the types of possible repercussions that the president of Belarus could be facing from these agencies at least? Well, I mean, we have to break that down into different layers, okay? So first of all, you have to have the civil aviation, where they'd be looking similar to the FAA. Has this been a dangerous situation that uh, Belarus is responsible for? You had, you know, more than 100 passengers on that plane. It was a civil aircraft. Um, whether you want to call it um, hijacked, that it was diverted, uh, that they used a, a MiG-29 in order uh, to escort it down. It was very clearly on its way to another location. It was between two European capitals. That makes it an EU issue. Um, both of those states are NATO members as well, so that makes it a NATO issue. So you start breaking it down in terms of, well, is Belarus safe, just from a civil aviation standpoint? That's what they'll be looking at. And if they decide that it's not because of what has happened, they can do things like no overfly. They won't allow any... Um, aircraft to be landing from the United States or other parts of Europe into Belarus, nothing coming back out of Belarus, and that includes the national carrier. These are the things that EU ministers will be looking at, NATO will be looking at as well, and a sort of go around. Yes, in, 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 in some term that would be punitive, um, but there would be the argument from a safety standpoint that if you have somebody who appears, we, we use that word, correctly appears to have hijacked by force using military mm. force to hijack a civilian passenger plane there are safety issues and that's what secretary of state anthony blinken pointed out the the you have americans on board that flight you have europeans on board that flight it's audacious and it sounded crazy i'm sure if you, when you first heard the story i thought it was crazy but there is a safety element there mm -hmm. and part of the responsibility for european and american uh, governments the number one responsibility is to safeguard their citizens. So they'll be looking at that, and is Belarus essentially a dangerous place? Can it be trusted? And if the answer for that is no, whether that's the reality or whether it's punitive, that's what will be discussed and investigated over the coming hours and days. So listen, you point out in your story that uh, Lukashenko has a very powerful ally in Vladimir uh, Putin. Russia has also responded to this. What's been the Kremlin's response? And just walk us through the dynamic between Lukashenko and Putin. Well, Lukashenko and Putin have been allies for years. We have to keep in mind that really Lukashenko wouldn't be where he is without the support of President Vladimir Putin. So they're like-minded individuals. He is you know, he's run uh, Belarus with an iron fist. Again, widespread allegations that he rigged the last elections in August. But, you know, he's been seen standing side by side with President Putin. Now, if you're studying international geopolitics, you would have to ask yourself, would somebody like Lukashenko have uh, ordered something like this without the blessing or advice of the Kremlin, knowing full well that the international community, particularly the West, would be outraged by this. President Putin is clearly the patron of Lukashenko, so there'll be questions raised about that. In addition, um, the CEO of Ryanair and uh, the Irish um, prime minister, prime minister, foreign minister, 
Prime Minister Formas, um, both said mm. that there were a number of people that were on that flight, because Ryanair is an uh, Irish commercial uh, airline, mm -hmm. that there were a number of people on that flight who didn't make the whole journey. So there was one or two that got arrested, including, um, uh, excuse me, I lost his name, <laughs> In including, help me out, the opposition oh, journalist. Oh, sorry, including... Uh, Right, yeah, which I was hoping that you could say his name. You, say, you could say it better than me. Uh, pro, uh, yes. <laughs> Protestantic or something like that. Right, okay, <laughs> You're close better enough. Than me. And his girlfriend, but... Because right. it was new, this is new to me too, who, know, who heard of this person before, before today. Yeah. Um, and his girlfriend reportedly um, was uh, detained. However, there are a number of individuals who got off in Minsk and didn't continue that flight. And that's where Irish authorities, including the CEO of Ryanair, have said... Well, we believe there to be, they called them KGB, but that's the old name for what are FSB, Russian mm -hmm. agents on that plane. Well, that surely shows that there's some sort of uh, concert, uh, concerted co coordination between Russia um, and Belarus over this incident. And certainly that's what people will be investigating now. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, Charlie, I really appreciate you kind of coming in here. You were here on the 7 and here now because the information is just coming through. And yeah, when I initially read the story, I don't think I really realized the gravity of it. It seemed sort of odd. And then it wasn't until I sort of listened to your report that I realized um, the danger that many people were put in, that this is truly an international incident. You simply just can't take the citizens of other countries and do with them what you want because, uh, you know, you've got to beef with someone. It, I mean, it, it's quite an incident, and I'll, I'll be curious to see how the European Union and NATO handles this. Charlie Dagda, thank you very much. Thank you.